Alright, so this is my FNAF movie review. Uh, before I get into spoilers, I'll just say I found this film 10 out of 10, would watch again. Uh, if you like anything FNAF related, top quality. Um, definitely deviates from the original timeline. However, other than that, nothing to complain about. Um... Yeah, uh, definitely not a scary film. If I was going to rate this, uh, scare factor-wise, I'd give it like a 2, if only because there's a couple jump scares in there. And I fall to jump scares all the time. None were really that bad, though, so... Other than that, visuals were good, uh... Acting was pretty good. Nothing to complain about, really. And so now, I will move on to the spoiler section of this review. And I've already said that I found this film quite good. But, I'm just gonna comment on things. And naturally, there's only one place you can start uh, with anything FNAF related, and that is The Bite of 87. So, The Bite of 87... Uh, kind of takes place in this movie. And the setup for it was alright. I think it could have been done better. This film definitely decided to... I mean, there's still child murder in it, but it glosses over it a little more uh, than it does in the games, which is understandable. So for this, they decided to murder an adult via the chompy chompy mouth thing instead of the child. Um, it also was not an accident in the movie, which that's fine. Uh, Freddy, of course, would have actual Bite of 87 experience running through his noggin, so he would know uh, I can bite people, and it, it does fun things. Um, other than the bite of 87, another good starting point is just Mike. Uh, there's a lot going on there. Uh, I, I was thinking he was Mike Lafton. Uh, that, of course, would make the most sense. I, I don't like how they have the whole job interview scene, and it's like, oh, you're Mike. Yeah, your name is Michael, and then cuts off, and he starts having, like, a panic attack, pretty much, or freaking out. And that implied to me, okay, he's definitely Mike Lafton, the reason the guy's panicking is because he realizes, oh, this is the son of a serial killer. Um, because I, I mean, it had yet to be established how much uh, people knew about the killings that went on at Freddy Fazbear's or any of that. But there's definitely something up with Michael, otherwise why was that guy freaking out? So in future films I hope there's some clarity given on that, because in this film it's definitely not Mike Lafton, but just Mike something or other, maybe. Then there is the guy uh, well, I guess this takes place beforehand, but the security guard in the very beginning, who gets absolutely murdered by the animatronic gang, um, that sequence was alright, uh, there's a little bit of, like, foreshadowing on how he was going to die with him struggling to unlock that uh, air vent cover, and then the chair with the little screw he has to try to undo. And that was actually good foreshadowing for when Michael gets put in that situation. Yeah, but back to Michael. Uh, I don't quite get why the children seem to be afraid of him in the dreams, because my understanding of FNAF lore is originally why they um, don't like Michael, is because he's the son of William Afton, and they mistake him for William. 
In this, though, that's clearly not the case. So something else is going on, and I'm not sure what that something else is. There's also uh, just stuff about um, Vanessa, which I found interesting. Yeah, it's Vanessa. Okay. Uh, I almost said Victoria. Um, anyways, Vanessa, her character definitely felt strange throughout the entire film, which she's supposed to, until you find out who she actually is. At which point, it raised some questions, like, isn't she technically an accomplice to murder at this point? Especially at the end, when, um, yeah, Springtrap is talking to Vanessa and basically says, like, you were supposed to help me out here. And so that definitely implies, like, hey, she's in on it. Probably not from the time she was a child, but now that she's an adult, and she definitely knew about the murder stuff and who was doing it, and that makes me wonder, like, is her position as a cop actually just so that she can, um, is her position as a cop so that she can, uh, do some corrupt shenanigans in order to protect her father? That could be the case, uh, it could also just be the case that she decided to become a cop, and it just so happens that she's covering for her father on the side, or it could just be she's an honest cop except for the fact that she won't turn in her father. Uh, she points out that no one could find any of the bodies. Uh, because they were hidden in the animatronics. And so if she could just give them the tip of looking inside the animatronics, that would point out that they are indeed hidden. In All the children corpses are hidden inside of those. Um, I'm wondering what's going on with the brother of Mike, because he was kidnapped, except he doesn't appear as a ghost, and that tells me that he's either going to show up later, maybe like he's Golden Freddy or something like that, or, um, for whatever reason, he could still be alive, there's that possibility, I doubt that. Um, Especially because I believe uh, Springtrap even says, like, I killed your brother, now I'm going to kill you. Um, yeah, I, I believe he's dead, but I don't know why he isn't one of the animatronics, unless the killing uh, took place in a way prior to the animatronic stuff, where he just got killed... Um, I mean, I don't think it would be prior to animatronic stuff. I think the animatronic stuff was going on around the same time. But I think he was probably killed but never stuffed into an animatronic. That would be my best guess. Um, so that would explain why he's not haunting um, Freddy Fazbear's. Um, yeah, there's that possibility. I'm not sure how well that holds up, to be honest. Then, there's also the... There's some interesting animatronic uh, physics, to be sure. Uh, particularly around the um, muffin. Not the muffin, the cupcake that uh, Chica carries. I don't know how it can pull off some of the maneuvers that it does. Uh, I don't remember the cupcake in any of the games being like a feature. I've only played the first three though, so that could be just something I'm not aware of. But yeah, the cupcake pulls off some mad maneuvers. It's got some crazy physics going on there. But that's fine. I mean, it, it's a cupcake. Balloon guy being able to get into that other dude's car makes even less sense. So, nothing to worry about there in terms of breaking the level of immersion you are expected for in this film. 
Uh, spring trap, I think, could have been set up a little bit better. If only because you just never see him until he strolls onto screen uh, in the last act, and he's like, it's me, Vanessa's father, essentially, and I will murder you. You shouldn't have come here, and Vanessa, you should have taken care of this problem for me, etc., etc. Um, the glowing eyes I could have gone without. I mean, they could have signaled that they were going creepy mode other ways, like lights flashing, lights turning off and making it dark, that sort of thing. Although it is a good indicator of, alright, now the animatronics are on to you. I think it would hold a little bit more suspense factor, though, if you just didn't do anything with the eyes. Because there's all those scenes where they're getting along with the animatronics, and um, Mike is worried, understandably, and you never see the animatronic's eyes really go red because of the intervention by his sister. But if you just took out the red eye effect from the movie, then that makes the hanging out with the animatronics much more suspenseful, especially because in Mike's perspective in that, you don't really know if they're just acting friendly or if they really are just luring you into a false sense of security so they can murder you. Which would definitely seem to be within the realms of possibility. <laughs> um, Mike's dream... Uh, the last one was interesting, where um, basically they're like, we're going to make you either stay in this dream state of you back with your uh, brother, or you can choose not to, and then he chooses to has to give up his sister in order to do so, and then he takes it back. And the animatronics don't like that decision, so they decide to murder him. I don't quite get what would have happened if he said no the first time. Because if he said no, would they just kill him anyways? Because that seems like a pretty big possibility if their whole point of doing it is to get to Abby and he's just asleep. <laughs> a pretty easy uh, victim to kill there. So that's something in the film which I don't quite get. Uh, at least right, not right now. Maybe I'll understand what's going on in like a rewatch. And then if he says yes, I'm also wondering how they make that work. Is that also just killing him? That Because that, that certainly seemed like a possibility to me. <laughs> um, either option there seemed like, oh, there's a good chance he's going to just die. Then, a and it's definitely still a dream with the ghosts in it, but cause we know his father is still alive and his father appears in that dream. So it definitely isn't a, like ghost state, he's seeing the spirits of his actual family, I, I think, I mean, maybe his brother, maybe, but I'm pretty sure it's just ghost dream induced by sleeping in FNAF, because um, that was the fifth night, so sleep five nights at Freddy's and you can unlock the mysteries of whoever kidnapped your brother, except I, I would have liked a little bit more payoff on, like, his method and intent to use the dreams to find his brother, because he does mention, like, look, I'm coming back to the same dream over and over again, so I can find a detail about the killer, and then he's only able, his method only ends up working in the end, B 
because he contacts the uh, spirits and they tell him about the yellow rabbit. Which, that's cool. I think it would have been nice if, like, he realizes the license plate or honestly something to do with purple because there wasn't a lot of purple guy <laughs> um i expected a little bit more of that in this film like for whatever reason maybe he's wearing purple or he has a strong impression of this guy something about him there's purple going on here which i, I get it was a video game thing until that became like an actual part of the lore later on when it comes to Michael. Uh, but I think there should have been a little more um, in terms of Michael finding out who did it via um, his dream method. So maybe he finds out that oh, would you look here, this license plate, this type of car, because he already knows the type of car, and then he goes through some old records from Nebraska, and he's able to find out who owned the car, and that would probably be Purple Guy, and he's like, okay, it's William Afton, but he hasn't made perhaps he hasn't made the connection to William Afton being his boss yet, or that he is the Yellow Rabbit. That's not a, it wasn't a huge deal. I thought it just would have been a little more of a payoff, at least how he was intending to use the dreams. I, I think the way they did it still worked fine enough. There's also the fact that his sister is definitely talking to the ghosts away from the Five Nights at Freddy's establishment. Okay, I guess it's actually just called Freddy Fazbear's. Um, but his sister is talking to the ghosts while they're away, which would make it seem that they would actually know uh, their address, and maybe that's information they got off the ghost of his brother. I don't know. That would ex that would fill a lot of holes. Um, otherwise, why is like Freddy just able to figure out where they live? Well, we already know that the ghosts that what's her name these are the ones controlling the animatronics. And so, that uh, lets us know they know where the house is. And then, why do the ghosts talk to Abby? And with um, Michael's brother, I, I guess it's both their brother. Um, yeah, with her brother, um, having probably interacted with the other ghosts at some point, that might be why they to her, because I don't see how ghosts haunting Freddy Fazbear's establish a relationship with her otherwise. That wouldn't really make too much sense if you ask me. The animatronics, I think for the most part they're acting how I would have expected them to. They go into murder sprees when people break in, which I guess, I don't know why, I, I guess the justification for that is that they started trashing the place and the children still have a sentimental connection to the restaurant because of the pictures and other things, and so they decide, alright, we will murder these, uh, so they decide, okay, we'll murder these people, and they do. Um, yeah, I think with how they- I don't know why. The electricity thing being used to take out the animatronics, I thought that worked. It, it made sense, they don't want to perma-kill any of the animatronics, because there's going to be a second movie for sure. And 
the spring trap setup was I mean, it was alright. There was my big problem was there was the uh line of I always come back, which didn't make sense in this context. And in this context, it's like, why did he say that? I don't get it. It makes more sense in the OG stuff. But I also, I kind of expected a little bit more of him throughout the film. They definitely referenced him uh, semi-frequently. There's the picture of the yellow rabbit, and Vanessa uh, doesn't like the yellow rabbit. Uh, there's the picture of the yellow rabbit, and there's definitely something going on with the yellow rabbit, and you know that. And then uh, the kid draws the image of the yellow rabbit, while it's like, okay, tell me who killed my brother. Um, but he only shows up at the very end, and it's like, alright, I'm going to murder you, and then the animatronics decide to just let the cupcake bite him a couple times, and that triggers spring locks killing him. Which, okay, that is a way to go. Uh, I think him dying in there and, like, being shoved in the storage closet sets him up for coming back later. And I'm wondering if that's, if, like, second movie is when Michael is going to start, like, burning places to the ground so we get like crazy spring trap because he's definitely coming back I, and I would have liked to see spring trap show up a little before uh, that point but I I mean it's fine uh, he doesn't need to show up yeah so I mean overall great film those were just some of the things that stuck out to me uh, made me think like okay there's definitely a little bit of stuff they could have done differently but I, I'm pretty sure any of the flaws in this film can be accounted for in the next film and I think a lot of the choices were just because they wanted to keep a PG-13 rating which is a respectable decision yeah because they could have definitely gone the full lean into the child murder route, actually show children dying, that sort of thing. But they definitely went with the less gruesome choice and decided, no, we're, we're going to talk about it for sure, uh, but we're not actually going to show it on screen. I mean, There could have been a little bit of like a flashback or something like that from Vanessa showing Springtrap luring another kid uh, into the back where he will kill them as long as they don't show like the actual kid being murdered but maybe that's something we could get in the second film but yeah other than some stuff around purple guy this film was pretty good it's got a nice uh, family-centric message. Yeah, so I would say this film was top quality. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Speaking of the cameo, I did like the Matt Pat cameo.